it'll just blow that fuse and it should cut off the power. That is the output from the inverter. I am not a licensed electrician. I had to do all of this set up by myself. What's up everyone, Wild Schneider Outdoors, and welcome back to another scorcher of a day on the homestead. And I figured, what better day than on the sunniest, hottest day we've had in a long time than to show you guys our solar setup for our off-grid shop. Now, the most popular video on my channel right now by far is the wiring diagram and the run-through that we did on our off-grid camper trailer that we built. So I figured we've got a shop, we're running it off grid, might as well run you through how that works, how to wire it so that way it can give you an idea if you wanna do something like this in the future for your own build, why not have something to go off of? So let's go check it out. All right, this is the shop right here. It's not very big. Uh, we're gonna be building a bigger shop later on, but this is it, just uh, kinda like a shed, one of those pre-built sheds that you can buy, plopped it on the property. But as you can see, it is right here and our trailer is way up there on the top. So obviously running power from here to there or vice versa is just not possible. So we came up with a solution. We were like, hey, you know what? We've already done an off-grid build before. Why not just throw some panels on top, run everything inside, have the inverter and all that fun stuff in there. And then we can run what we needed inside of there and we wouldn't have to worry about tying into power anyways. And that's kind of how this whole off-grid setup for not only this, but also for our future house, and then for the shop that's gonna go up there, and then the cabin that's going across the creek. If we can make this work for us, for this on the small scale, why not scale it up to the bigger scale and get that going so that way we can be completely off-grid and self-reliant. So let's go inside and check it out. Okay, so this is the setup right here. Now we'll go through each individual part and how it's wired separately, but just to give you an overview of what it looks like before I start taking stuff apart and showing you what we got going on, this is the entire setup. There's really not a lot to it. You got your battery here. This is a grow watt inverter charger. We've got our AC panel, our PV cutoff switch, and then the wires that go up to the panels. So we'll go piece by piece, part by part. I'll run you through how we did it and then we'll follow from the AC panel out to what we actually wired in. Okay, starting with the panels. Now, this is not all that's powering this. We've got eight of these currently up on the roof, but these are Renogy's 100 watt monocrystalline panels, right? And they are capable or they're rated for 100 watts, right? Now granted, depending upon the sun, how much you're getting, if it's cloudy, whatnot, you can get less. Sometimes you can get more, but that's their rated power is 100 watts. Now we have eight of these up top wired in two separate series. So see back here, you've got your female and male MC4 connectors. And they are, they do have a little protection here, but I do recommend putting inline fuses in. But what we did is we took four of these and wired them in series, meaning positive to negative and so on and so forth. And then we have two series of four, which means that a series of four, a series of four wired together in parallel. So that way we've got two parallel strings of four in series. And then for parallel, you take positive to positive, negative to negative. We've got all of that come together. So that way when it comes into the shed itself, it only comes in on these two cables right here. So we don't have to worry about running a bunch of different cables in. They just come in on one positive and one negative. Now these are the panels up here that we have on the roof. Now I understand panels can be expensive, but honestly, Renogy has fairly affordable panels and I'm talking about a dollar a watt, depending upon if they're running a sale or not. I got mine on sale, so I paid about $85 per panel. We have eight of them on the roof and I have two of them that I haven't set up yet because I'm not sure if I want to put them on this because I'm getting plenty of power out of the eight up there. So we've got two more just sitting around. Maybe we'll find something else to do with those, but that's the panels, moving on down. Okay, so from the panels, they come through the side. We have a little umbilical that puts them through the cow or puts them through the side so that way we don't get any water in here. But I ran them inside and I ran them to this DC circuit breaker here. Now, this will help in a couple ways. One, this allows me to shut off the power coming from the panels when the sun's out. So if I have to do any work whatsoever, I can come in and turn this off. But additionally, even though I do have them fused up on the panels themselves in line, 
so that way if there's any over voltage or a short it'll just blow that fuse and it should cut off the power if there is a short that makes it down into these wires this will trip before it ever makes it to my inverter now always protect anything electronic because one fault in one area can turn into one fault in many areas and be very very expensive so this is just a switch i purchased on amazon and the little housing here and that brings the power in from the panels into the switch and then i have it wired so it comes out and then comes all the way over here and into the inverter all right so from the panels everything comes into this grow watt inverter charger now this is a really nifty little machine a lot of times when you see solar builds you see people that have a solar charge controller right uh, either mppt or pwm depending upon their usage and then from there they'll kick out that power to their batteries and then from their batteries everything will be wired into an inverter or a dc fuse box or whatever it may be right well with this this is an everything all in one so this is my charge controller this is my inverter this is my ac to dc converter right i can pump power into this thing and have it go to the batteries and looking at the sticker over here right i can it's gonna be really hard for you to see but i'll just give you some of the specifics this is the grow watt spf 3000 tl lvm 24p lots of letters lots of numbers right what does that mean this is their 3000 watt output 6000 max for a moment uh 24 volt inverter so it uses a 24 volt system so my battery is a 24 volt and everything in here comes in 24 volt and then it spits out 120 volt ac current now the max pv on this so the maximum solar that you can put through here is 145 volts right and the mpp will dumb that down to 30 to 115 volts dc current so if you don't know anything about solar that's a lot of power right you would have to spend a lot of money for a decent mppt charge controller to spit that kind of power out where this thing is everything all in one and i will leave a link for everything the panels the breaker boxes th this little system here everything everything i have i will leave a link down in the description so that way you can check it out yourself and see if it's something you want to do but let's look closer at this all right so i pulled off the lower panel here i don't recommend doing this while it's running i'm not going to touch anything in here because it's all got power going to it because i need it to but You've got the PV lines coming in here. They come into the bottom and connect right here. That is my PV input. Now, what this machine will do is it'll take the input here. It'll MPPT it, right? Max power point something. I'll have to look it up, but MPPT takes it and then it will spit it out. If you see back there, those two big lugs with these large cables, those are my battery cables. And it'll spit that out and it goes into here. And you can see this yellow cable here. This connects up into the little can or the RS-485 port, and that is the battery management system. So I didn't have to set anything in here as far as voltages goes. This thing talks to my battery and my battery tells it, hey, this is what I need. This is how I wanna be set up. This is how you should run me. And they just communicate back and forth and do their own thing. So that's the battery. If I wanted to run anything DC, now this is mostly for inverting. If I wanted anything DC, what I would have to do is I would tap into the negative and the positive on my battery, because I've got separate lugs over here, right? So I can tap into those, run it to a DC fuse box, and then off that DC fuse box, I could run, you know, any 12 volt after I stepped it down, step it down, and then run it off a 12, 12 volt DC fuse box. Then I can run 12 volt appliances. But for in here, I didn't need that, so I left everything as AC. Moving over here, we have this grow watt now this is called a wi-fi dongle i didn't name it that that's just what it call is called now what this does is this plugs into your system and it taps into my wi-fi now believe it or not if you see way up there on top of that hill inside that is my wi-fi so we do have internet out here and that reaches all the way down here to this wi-fi dongle and what that does is it talks to the app and I can track my batteries, monitor them, see the solar input, AC output, the inverter, I can see the watt usage, I can check on my batteries, you know, you name it, I can do it through this app and I can do that from anywhere. I don't need to be right next to it. So this allows the system to communicate with the app so I can see exactly what's going on. That's pretty much it for the input, not much going on there. Let's talk about the AC side uh, of the house. So right here, I've got this black cord. You can see I've got a green, a black, and a white, right? This is just an old extension cord that I cut up and pulled the wires out. Now this is your AC in. 
Now I know you're probably thinking, you just said you don't have any power. What are you talking about AC in? Well, that black cord that you see there, this is the male end of an old extension cord. Now, what this little thing can do is allow you to be somewhat grid tied, right? So if you see here, it's showing you that I've got energy from the panels coming into the uh, coming into the MPP charge, charge controller. That charge controller is feeding into my batteries. So it's telling me that it's charging with solar. And then it's also telling me that it's taking that excess energy from here, sending it to the inverter, powering the inverter, and then running all of my loads. So I'm not using any battery at all. This, everything in here right now is running off of solar because there's enough energy coming in from that big ball of gas in the sky and it's given me enough energy to run not only all of my loads, but also top off my battery. So that's pretty awesome. But anyways, when that doesn't have any energy or if the battery gets too low, because I don't have the grid, what I can do is I can come down, fire up a generator and plug this in and it'll charge at 30 amps. Now that's a lot for my little tiny generator that I have, but this will plug in and then I can both power my loads through this system and charge the battery at the same time without having to worry. So in the winter, when it gets nasty here, like it usually does, and we don't have a lot of sun, in an emergency, I can plug a generator in and charge and power everything I need as well as top off my batteries until we can get a good sunny day. So pretty neat. Okay, final part from the inverter itself. Back there, you see this Romex cable coming through. It's got your ground, your hot, and your neutral, right? And that is the output from the inverter in the grow watt which is giving me 120 volt AC power, which I have run into this box, which I will very carefully pull the cover off of and show you how we got it wired. And then we'll look at all the appliances I can run. And then we'll talk about kind of the limitations of this system, what I would do differently, and what I really, really, really like about the system and a couple things that I don't. So let's get into that. Before we get into that though, totally skipped over the fact that in order to do this, you need a freaking battery. So. This is a 24 volt, 200 amp hour lithium ion battery from Life Power. They used to be called EG4, uh, but now they're called Life Power. And what this is, is this is a server rack battery. Now, this battery has built in overcharge protection, under or overcurrent protection, undercurrent protection, over, you know, temperature sensors if it gets too hot, if it gets too cold. This battery's battery management system, again, which it communicates to the inverter through this little cable here, tells it everything it needs to know. And an additional safety feature here is it's got its own built-in circuit breaker, right? And a, I believe it's called a resistance capacitor, whatever you want to call it. When you first connect it, it doesn't give a surge of power. There's a little capacitor in here that stops it from doing that. But then you've got these, these on-off switches here, which can control the main power and shut all the power out going to these uh, lugs here. And yeah, I mean, it's so far, it's been a great battery. It's got a state of charge light here, which gives you 25% increments. You can see here it's blinking, which means it's charging. Gives you faults, which again, through my Wi-Fi dongle, I can see any faults I have going on. And then the green light obviously tells you that it's running. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. It's, it's just a lithium iron battery, weighs about 100 pounds. Um, super heavy, super heavy duty. Got all the protections built in, so you don't have to worry about this getting damaged or your inverter getting damaged when it comes to charging and discharging. Okay. Before we get too far into this, I just want you to know, I am not a licensed electrician. All of the stuff I have done has been through research and calling friends that either know something about electricity as in they are a licensed electrician or just Googling it and trial and error. But this is what we have for our AC system. So this yellow line here that comes in, you see it branched up through the top. That is our hot. So I've got a ground, a neutral, and then my hot line. Those are the three lines coming off of the inverter back there. Now in here you'll see I've got my two hot lugs there and I have a little piece of wire connecting the two and I've bridged that gap. Why? Because I have one source of power coming from here and this has two hot legs. Now I didn't know how to charge the other side without getting double breakers and I didn't want to do that so I just pigtailed them together and ultimately it worked. Additionally what I've done is I have bonded the neutral and the ground because there is no true ground here. This isn't an actual sub panel that you would see, say up there where my power comes out of the pole. 
right? I don't have a true ground. So to get this to work, I had to wire it with the neutral bonded to the ground. Now, if you're an electrician out there and this is something totally wrong and I'm gonna end up killing myself, please, for the love of all things holy, leave a comment down below and let me know. But for me, this is the only way I could get the system to work. Okay. So from that hot bar, I have two 20 amps and two 15 amp breakers. Now that's a little bit of overkill, but right now I've only got one 15 hooked up here, one 15 hooked up here and a 20 hooked up here, right? And those are all independently controlled. I can turn them on and off. Again, when the cover's on, this isn't all exposed and I'm not touching it cause it's still live, but when the cover's on, I can independently turn these on and off. Everything's labeled and you know, it's just nice and clean. It doesn't look like this rat's nest in here, but this is just your basic AC panel box. You got your hot, you got your neutral and you got your ground. Now, of course, because my neutral and ground are bonded, I've bonded everything together on that grounding bar on that neutral bar over there. And then I've grounded to the box. I can touch it, right? I'm not getting shocked. Oh my God. But everything's grounded out. This has a protection in it. And then the battery itself has a protection in it. So if there is a short or there is a fault, the breaker will trip, this will shut itself down and the battery will protect itself. So I don't have to worry about it. But I mean, that's it. That's all there really is to this system. Okay. So you've seen the panels, you've seen the shutoff switch, you've seen the inverter, the battery, and the AC panel box. Now, off the AC panel box, this is what we have run. You can see down here, we've got a string of circuits run for plugins. Now, this is a GFI. The closest, or the first string closest to the panel box itself, according to everything I read, should be a GFI. So if anything happens, that will trip before that breaker does. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But we've got that run. It goes up and over, drops back down. We've got a plug-in over here. This is where we're running our timers for our grow lights for all of our plants. We have another one wired up back there. This place is a mess. It's also storage. But we've got another one wired up back there that is going to, as the summer gets warmer, power a sensor operated or temperature controlled fan that should help keep it nice and cool in here so the plants don't get too hot. But that's one circuit. The next circuit we've got run comes up over and drops down and I've wired it into, come on adjust, this switch here. And if you follow it back up, boom, you've got lights, right? I've got lights down there, lights up here, and they're all just powered by this switch. Nothing to it. The third circuit that we have run comes through up and then spits out just right here. See if you can see that. And if I go outside and we look up, it just powers an LED floodlight. Not that we have any issues out here. Again, I live in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing out here, but just in case someone wanted to come and take our stuff, right? I've got a little added protection and it's really not for thieves, right? This is more or less for when my dumb butt comes down here without a flashlight and tries to open the door and I start tripping on stuff. So that'll turn on, it's on a sensor. So when the sun's down is the only time it'll turn on then it'll be on for a set amount of time and then I can see. This last circuit here, which we haven't had wired up yet, what that's going to do is once this is more cleaned out, once we have our, you know, our house up and we have more storage, we can utilize this for what we really want to use it for is we will have a little setup over here with trickle chargers. Now we have a lot of column toys, stuff that has batteries, stuff that we don't really use a lot in the winter, but we still need the batteries to be charged because we don't want those to go bad. So we'll set up a trickle charge system over there and then we can hook all of our batteries up and just keep everything nice and topped off and regulated. And again, all of this powered by the sun not plugging into anything unless it's an emergency and I need to plug into generator power to top the batteries off. But other than that, completely 100% off grid. All right, folks, like I said, I am not a licensed electrician. I had to do all of this set up by myself through research that I did on my own time and a lot of trial and error. This did not work the first time I put it together, but through trial and error, we were able to get it going. It works now, and this is a system that works for me. Now, there are tons of options out there for you to choose as far as batteries, inverters, solar panels, you name it. There are so many options out there. This is just what works for me. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them in the best way that I can. Um, you know, I had to learn a lot through watching other people. So if this helps you in any way, awesome. If you aren't subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button. This is one video out of many in our off-grid homestead build series. So hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so that way you get notified every Friday when we put out a video so that way you don't miss any of our content. I appreciate you hanging around. Check out the link in the descriptions for all of the products that I've talked about in today's video. And of course, as always, stay wild.